This is the final part of our look at these cameras. Um, this is going to be a photo slideshow showing a bunch of test photos that I have taken with both of these cameras. First I will uh, provide a little more information that I've learned since filming the last part of this video series. Um, first of all, thank you to everybody who shared uh, your knowledge that you had on these cameras that I didn't have and didn't give in the uh, first two parts of this series. Um, one thing in particular that I'll mention, I had wondered if the reason the quality of the pictures from these cameras is so darn poor compared to a newer camera taking a VGA resolution picture might be because the uh, camera actually takes an interlaced image. It scans the image in interlaced form. It basically takes an NTSC video frame and makes it a still photo. Well, VU Westlife uh, informed me that the first generation Mavica cameras, the MD5 or the FD5 and the FD7, actually do take an interlaced picture. And uh, if you ever look at test photos of the FD5 or the FD7, it's so jagged from the interlacing. And uh, those first generation Mavica cameras actually have a setting on them you can set. The mode in which it takes the picture, there's two settings, either frame or field. And if I remember right, if you set it to field mode, um, the camera composes the image of only one half of an NTSC frame, so you have half the scan lines. Um, that's in field mode, and in frame mode, uh, the camera takes both interlaced fields of an NTSC video frame to make the image. So, if you're in field mode and only taking half the scan lines, what you get is a much lower quality and very jagged looking image but motion isn't blurry or really weird looking or anything. When you take it in frame mode and you take the whole image, it's better quality because you have more scan lines, but if you're taking a picture of something that's fast moving, the picture will look like there's like double vision. Like if I took a picture of my hand moving really fast like this, the picture will show my hand here and my hand here because my hand's here in one uh, field and my hands here in the other field. So you get a higher quality picture but taking a picture of anything that's moving fast enough look terrible. So this was with the first generation uh, Mavica cameras. They actually took an interlaced image. Uh, with the next generation and beyond including these ones um, I have confirmed it, they do take a progressive scan image just like any modern digital camera. But as you'll see in these test photos, it looks <laughs> interlaced um, in a lot of the photos. I would say that's just because the image sensor in these things is really low resolution. Um, with my modern camera, I can take a VGA resolution picture, but that picture is still composed with a 12 megapixel image sensor, and so it looks much better. So that's what's going on with these things. They do take a modern style progressive scan image. It's just with a really primitive, not primitive, but early as far as still cameras is concerned, uh, CCD in quite low resolution. Another thing I learned, a couple of you tipped me off to this, so thank you. Um, the lenses are basically copied over from a handy cam. And uh, a neat thing is, apparently, the CCD actually isn't uh, parallel with the lens. It's actually perpendicular. The CCD, I guess, sits, um, oops, sits down here. So it sits the way my finger's oriented, and then there's a mirror like that that bounces the image from the lens down to the CCD. So that's kind of interesting. I wonder if the newer Mavicas are like that, or if they switch to a parallel CCD eventually. So that's what I learned since the last part of the video, so thank you guys for providing me that information. Oh, there's one more thing that I have to mention. I made the assumption that because these two cameras are almost identical, the pictures they took were almost identical. Um, after I filmed the last part, I finally did some uh, shot, I, I did some direct comparisons, and that's not true at all. The FD-75 here 
takes much better photos than the FD-71. Much, fo much better photos. Very noticeable improvement in quality with this camera. The color is better. There's uh, higher color saturation and the colors look more correct. I found out that this camera, the pictures it takes, have kind of a greenish tint to them. Whereas this camera, they actually look good. I don't know if this is by design or if maybe some electronics are aging in this camera causing the pictures to go a funny color. I don't know. But yeah, way better color in this camera. Pictures are way brighter. I would assume there's probably a different and better CCD in this camera. The CCD does have all the same specifications as the CCD in this one, but pictures are so much brighter in this camera. Um, they're a little bit clearer, a little bit crisper, better looking. So yeah, um, no question, this camera takes much improved photos over this camera. So it's kind of, it's a little bit of a bummer because I've decided I want to keep this camera because it's, it's the better featured one of the two. But uh, it, uh, it's no matter to me anyway. I wouldn't, you know, VGA resolution cameras. I'm not going to pick one based on which one takes the better photos. By the way, um, since filming the last part, I have purchased on eBay a Sony Mavica MVC FD200. That was the last ever floppy disk Mavica. It takes two megapixel pictures. Um, I got it for pocket change on eBay. Um, I forget if it was tested or not, but uh, it was really cheap. So uh, that's on the way to, uh, well, to mom's house, so I'll have to wait until whenever I see her again to get it. But yeah, once I get that camera, and assuming it hopefully works, I'll be making a video of that too. And uh, another photo slideshow of that. So that'll be awesome. Two megapixel floppy disk camera. Oh yeah, something else. V Westlife informed me that Sony did in fact make a double speed computer floppy drive. It was a USB floppy drive and it was double speed, 2x, just like the drives in these cameras. So that's neat. Now finally onto the slideshow. Um, the pictures you're about to see are an amalgamation of both of these cameras. Um, I threw them all into one folder so I don't know which ones came from which camera but there are a few photos which I did put aside specially because they were from the direct picture quality comparison I made. So I will make notes as we go along uh, which photo came from which camera. This is what the solarize effect does. As I look at some of these pictures now, I think I was a bit harsh in calling the picture quality crap. Um, for the time, it was definitely very good. Probably one of the best, if not the best, picture quality you could get on a digital camera in 1998. Um, but definitely not up to the standards today. It's crap compared to what we have now, but it was very good for the time. The picture of the CFL we took came out surprisingly artistic.
This is negative, obviously. Okay, now for some comparison photos between the two cameras. This is with the MVC FD71, and this is with the FD75. Notice better color, more saturated, more natural color. 71, and 75, better color, brighter. 71, this was taken with the flash. 75, more natural color, bit clearer, less noise. And this photo I concatenated together uh, the 71's on top, 75 on the bottom. Brighter, better color, bit clearer. So you can see there the uh, very noticeable improvement of image quality with the FD75, which I never would have assumed had I not actually performed a direct comparison between the two cameras, so that surprised me quite a bit. Finally, here's a direct comparison between the FD75 and my modern Canon PowerShot SX130 set to VGA resolution mode. And uh, here's the FD75. And here's the modern camera. You can see not only is the color much better, but uh, even though they're the same resolution, the one from the Canon is just way clearer and uh, it just looks so much better and I would assume this is due to two things first and foremost um, the Canon has a 12 megapixel CCD in it and I wouldn't be surprised if Canon incorporated some digital processing that takes advantage of that resolution even when you're taking a lower resolution picture and second the Canon's got less compression um, the picture from the Mavica is about 55 kilobytes in size. The picture from the Canon is about 170 kilobytes in size. Just about triple the, uh, the file size. Although I did try uh, a bitmap picture with the Mavica, an uncompressed bitmap picture. And it very, very minorly improves the jaggedness and the clarity but not by much at all and it still doesn't even come close to the Canon so uh, I'd bring it down to CCD first and then compression after that but very interesting comparison nonetheless alright folks that's all I'm gonna bore you with about these cameras anymore um, I hope you've enjoyed this little series I hope you enjoyed learning about these cameras and uh, their history uh, these are definitely a very very important point in the history of digital photography for sure the first really popular digital cameras and uh, for a long time even though these were floppy disk cameras and other people that are, were already using flash memory um, the picture quality of these uh, always stood up to the other cameras of the time and I can't wait to review that FD200 because just looking at uh, test photos from that camera even though it's still a floppy disk camera and it has to employ pretty aggressive compression to fit just four two megapixel pictures to a floppy the pictures are really good and they definitely um, stand up to any camera made around that camera's time which was 2002 so I can't wait to review that camera for you guys if you want one of these, these are pocket change on eBay. eBay is swamped with these. Millions of these were sold. And uh, lots of them were sold to businesses and schools who uh, use them because, you know, they were so easy to use. Just 
put the floppy in your computer to get the pictures. These were really popular with businesses and schools. So there's so many of these. Just eBay is just flooded with them. And uh, for such cheap prices and all in good shape and some of them tested and stuff. So it's really easy to get almost any model you want for really cheap on eBay. The only models that aren't cheap to get are the FD95 and the FD97. They were the best Mavica cameras ever made. 2 megapixels. Um, they're the same camera except the FD97 has a memory stick slot. But they're the best 2 Mavicas ever made. They had prosumer quality optics in them and a prosumer quality uh, CCD similar to what you would find on a, uh, a cheap DSLR. So they go for a bit more money but still not bad. Um, but yeah, even uh, even one of the first generation ones, an FD5 or an FD7, I just looked on eBay, the cheapest, Ma well, no, the cheapest Mavica on eBay as a film in this video is a broken FD200 for about 10 bucks. Uh, after that, the next cheapest is a FD7 for like 12 bucks. The seller put it 50% off. They were trying to get it for, get 24 for it. But yeah, 12 bucks for an FD7. Geez, that would almost tempt me. So yeah, really easy to get one of these if you want to play around with some vintage uh, photography technology. So there you go, guys. I really hope you enjoyed. I've enjoyed showing these cameras to you. Thanks once again to Neil for giving these to me. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys later.